I want to prophesy on you. I receive. That you will become that reference point in your family. Yes. That others will draw strength from your wisdom. Yes. I pray that you will have the advantage in life. Yes. I pray that you will be ahead in your family. Yes. I pray that God will make you a head. Yes. Jesus. I pray that this fast will not leave you the same. Yes. I pray this six hourly prayers will not leave you the same. Yes. Now I pray that every misfortune in your future, we uproot it out now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we speak peace to your life. Amen. Prosperity upon your highways. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. We declare that it is well with you. Amen. I pray that your health will not fail you. Amen. I pray that your, the number of your days you shall fulfill. Amen. I pray that no friend will successfully betray you. Amen. I pray that nothing will die in your hands. Amen. I pray that your status is increasing. Amen. I pray that your profile is getting better. Amen. I pray that where you were once rejected, you are now accepted. Amen. I pray that God will compensate you. 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 Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I I pray that your head is lifted. Amen. Your finances are improved. Amen. Your understanding is sharpened. Amen. Your wisdom is accurate. Amen. Your speech is clearer. Amen. Your boldness is reinforced. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray that from today, men will begin to honor you. Amen. I pray that from today, angels will answer your bidding. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lift up your hands and receive those prophecies upon your life. I say, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father, for the ministry of your word. Thank you, Father, for the power of your word. Thank you, Father, because things are working together for our good. Thank you, Father, for giving us the profile of the saints. Thank you, Father, for establishing us in all righteousness. Thank you, Father, for making all things beautiful. We give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please take your seats in God's presence. Hallelujah. All right. Um, please try to join the fasting, try to join the prayers. I've encouraged us you know, on Sunday that it's a good thing that you come to pray so that you will not be a prey. The truth is that there's so much that God has done, but you cannot see the best of it if you don't take time out to pray. Jesus, the Son of God, Son of God, literally God, spent time praying. There's no dodging, sir. I had wished there was a way out. There's no dodging to this prayer matter. I've checked it. You can't worship in place of prayer. You can't read Bible for prayer. You can't preach for prayer. You can't evangelize your way out of prayer. I'm telling you, you can't give out of prayer. Although that giving is powerful, though. but you can't dodge prayer. I said on Sunday, I said, let them know you're a fine boy, but a fine boy that prays. Yes, as far as I'm concerned, we should, we should do a sticker. Fine boys still pray. <laughs> Fine babes still catch fire. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's appreciate Minister Victor for that powerful. Amen. 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 God bless you. I was not sure if he was able to say everything in his mouth because I feel where he was coming from was deeper. But you know, sometimes you stand there and you, you are not able to find the full English. You know what I mean? This is not as simple as you think. Because I could tell that anybody that quotes John 12, 24, anybody, there are some scriptures you quote, I can tell you you are not shallow. For example, if you quote anything in Colossians, you have tried. I'm not teasing you. If you can successfully quote anything in Colossians, anything, and I literally mean anything. So if you see anybody that refers to John 12, 24, there is something in spirit is hovering around. He might not have been able to articulate it in speech, but there's something in spirit is trying to say. Let me just try to slide that in before I teach what I want to teach. Please sit down, please. He said, Verily, very like so unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. There's so much inside the scripture. This scripture is a, is a scripture of, when I came in and I saw it, I said, ah, 
you open this scripture. This is not an ordinary scripture. There are scriptures that say, uh, mm -mm, this one, John 12, 24, is not ordinary. Ah, you say what's inside is corn of wheat, uh, Paul, die, abide it, alone. Everything carries life, everything here. Let me quickly try just one or two minutes and then I continue. It says, except, it says very, very, first of all, whenever you see Jesus Christ saying, truly, truly, or trying to repeat that I'm telling you the truth, it's like, say, well, light and lie. You know, you're, over, you're exaggerating. I would have believed you without what light and lie. Just say what you want to say. Once you start to put, uh, I will start to suspect, are you really telling me the truth? But just say, truly, truly, I'm saying, this word very, very means, truly, truly, or truthfully, truthfully, I say unto you, except a kern of wheat fall into the ground and die. What this is saying is so powerful that I may not be able to unbundle everything. But my emphasis is on what Victor was sharing. That, number one, it should go into the ground. If you saw my tweet during the course of the week, I said, a seed in the hand is a potential. If you hold seed in your hand, you are holding potential. You might even be holding a whole forest, but it's still in your hand. For as long as it stays in your hand, it will not multiply to you. Beautiful seed. Lovely, maybe curved, colored, whatever it is. It says it will stay with you like that. But a seed in the ground is an investment. So a seed in the hand is a potential. A seed in the ground is an investment. For as long as you hold seed in your hand, there is no future in your seed. It must go into the ground. Anything that does not go to the ground is not ready to die. Because after ground, is that it has to now die. That decimation of a seed is the potential of your future. That's what I want to talk about. Many people have not fallen to the ground. That's what Christianity invites us to. To fall to the ground and die to self. Oh, but that's the power. That is where the power and the mystery of godliness lies. Some Christians have come to the ground, but they refuse to die. What does it mean to come to the ground? Give their lives to Christ. But to die is where you really start to live. That's why Jesus said anyone who saves his life will lose it. You see, if you read the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, everyone in that scripture had something to do with death. Just go and study it. Everything in Hebrews from verse 1 to the last verse. It was about the die, the death of Sarah's own. The death of this one. The death of this one. The power of faith is in the readiness to die. Please let me repeat that statement. The power of faith is in the readiness to die. The power of faith. Your future is not in your security of yourself. It is in the willingness to lay your life and pick it up. Jesus gave us this understanding when he said, I, 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 nobody takes my life from me. I am the one that lays it down and takes it up. But let me quickly hurry up so that I can teach what I want to teach. It says it abides alone. So the power here is that you are not going to necessarily leave the earth, but you, you will not be fruitful. You'll just be alone. You'll just be there. You are just coasting well. But if you are going to see great things, you need to know that death is necessary. And when, what he said was very right. It is the dying to self. Oh, how I wish he could amplify that voice. That there is power in dying to self. Literally, you cannot win until you die. I want to go and watch that film, Matrix. It was at his death, he now became a winner yes, over his terrorist. One, remember, just start from the part one, where he could now stop bullets. If they did not shoot him to death, he would still be striving, striving, striving. It takes dying to win. And not dying or just dying. No, it's dying to yourself so that Christ may live in you. So that you die to yourself, so that Christ may be glorified. Quickly, let me show you one more scripture and run to my scripture. In Revelations 12, verse 11, quickly, hurry up. Revelations 12, 11. Revelations 12, 11. See what it says. Very profound. How many of us remember the scripture? Yes, sir. Let's try it. Let's try to read it. Everybody, one, two, go. You know, many times we quote this too the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, the word, the word, the word. 
He said they did not love their lives so, even if it required, required dying. That's what he's saying. And they love not their lives even unto death. What am I trying to bring to your attention? If every time you think about survival, you are thinking about it for yourself, you're on your way to death. It takes you to forsake yourself so that Christ may live in you. Let me quickly show you one more scripture. In 1 Corinthians 15, 14, 1 Corinthians 5, 14, sorry, 5, 14, 1 Corinthians 5, 14, see what it says. It says something that I think we should share and then we go on. He said, but them that are without 5.14. Okay, okay, so you are starting from 13. It's okay, ah, 5.13. But them that are without God, judge it. Therefore put, oh, sorry, please. 2 Corinthians 5.14, please. 2 Corinthians 5.14. Sorry, please. 2. Uh -huh. See what it says. For the love of Christ constrains us. <laughs> Let's read from 13. Quickly. Uh -huh. See what it says. He said, For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. To be beside yourself, that means whether we are acting mad. He says, It is to God. Or whether we are sober, it is for your cause. Just to prove what I'm saying, give us amplified classic. So that somebody can, you know, sometimes if you don't see these things, it will look like as if, Pastor, you. Uh, this is, for if we are beside ourselves, <laughs> mad. Hello. You know, sometimes when you see somebody who is fire in the Holy Ghost, he acts mad. Madness, you give your first fruit. The mad is the natural response. You give your tithe. You the mad. He said, whether we do like mad, as some say, it is for God and concerns him. If we are in our right man, it is for your own benefit. That means our default state should be madness. We are normal. Listen, you see, let me tell you something. A lot of times, people think that we are, we are brainwashed. You know, I want to tell you, if anybody will be brainwashed, I'm not one of them. My head clear. I don't know if you understand. I'm one person, one you know, I don't know they deceive me. If you deceive me, too, I will fight you. One day, I told the Lord, if God is God, let's, just let us know you who you are. I'm not one person that's like, so I want you to know that you're not dealing with a stupid person who's just, you know, spooky person with spirit. Okay? I'm very pra pragmatic and practical. I don't like to deceive myself. Ask mama. There's nothing wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, and I'm saying that to make you know that Sometimes you feel that when we talk to you, that maybe we are at it bad, you know, Jew. No. Let me tell you something. If your God is not mistaken in your life as a madman, you are not here ready. That you know that you have lost every other thing. That's what it means to die to self. That your appetite and cravings are no longer just for ephemeral things. Please, I repeat. I repeat. Know your pastor today. I'm one guy. If you know the walk, or oh God, there's nothing wrong with using my brains. Ah, it's too clear. So he says that there are people that are being like they are beside themselves. What is the matter? I remember the day I told my ogre that I want to resign from job. She said, are you okay? That's another way of saying, are you mad? <laughs> Say, you're a young man. You just got married. There's a way you should govern your life. Don't take this type of, you, you know. And I looked at her and I said, Ma, thank you, Ma. May people not love you to your destruction. Amen. Nonsense love. Then I will now live for the rest of my life not meeting a shilly. Ah. But la shilly. You know who she is? People <laughs> also know that if you have an offense, it's not him that will treat you. He has people that will come as backup. <laughs> If you miss this wedding, is at your period. <laughs> what are we saying tonight? I'm simply pointing out to us that there is a category and it requires that loss of yourself. Stop being too conscious of yourself. If your logic is beclouding your spirituality, you will have a problem. Don't be too cerebral at the expense of your spirituality. The things of the spirit are not for natural men. Let me show you one more scripture. 1 Corinthians 2. I hope I have time today. <laughs> I came armed to the teeth. Let's see. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse... Um, let's just, for the sake of time, start from verse 12. 
Okay, First Corinthians 2 from verse 12. Just for the sake of time, all right? Let's hurry up. Look at what it says. See what it says from verse 12. Uh -huh. See, it says, Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. Are we together? Yes, sir. All right, so that it's not just me reading. Let's read together. Oh, yeah, one to go. Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God, giving to us, that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate with him of the divine favor and blessing. May you grant, may God grant you comprehension of his free gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Read on, my dear. We're going to verse 16. It's the last verse. Read on. One to go. And we are setting this truth forth in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truth with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. Read on. But the natural, no spiritual man does not accept or work up or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are fully meaningless nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them or progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually designed. Are you seeing that you know I didn't write Bible? So when you see some people say, I don't understand, they are just being honest. They are natural men. If you don't understand this thing, you could have been in church. It doesn't matter. That's why it says that the natural man be non-spiritual. You are a Christian, but you are not spiritual. Man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart. These gifts and teachings and revelations that we are saying by the Spirit of God. I want us to pray and say, Lord, make me spiritually minded. 60 seconds. Just make that prayer. It's a good place to pray. Say, Lord, make me spiritually minded. Let me not be deceived. Let me be spiritually minded. Help me, Holy Spirit of God, that I will be spiritually minded about all things. Make me spiritually minded. Make me spiritually conscious. Holy Spirit of God, make me spiritually minded in Jesus' name. Amen. Stop. Stop. So this verse 14 gives us a clearance. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If you are not understanding, it might not be because there's a problem with the teacher or the scripture, that you are, spiritual, you are not spiritually discerning the scripture. You are just thinking we are using a head. Because it doesn't make sense when you put this one here, uh, that's this one, you know, and logically everything is diffused. And that's why I want to ask you to please be spiritually minded. Do you believe God answered your prayers? You just prayed. Yes, yes. That's why I want you to be sensitive in your spirit. Don't let the devil or your logic or your uh, um, lack of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit blind you from listening to God. You know, there's something called mental assent. It's different from faith. You can listen and be agreeing. Like if I ask you a question, can God do all things? What will you say? Yes. But if I tell you to trust God for a billionaire tomorrow, uh, what would you say? No. So your yes is yes that God can do it. You mentally agree. But the pragmatism of it tomorrow or more, you never reach. Am I correct? Yes. yes. So it's not because you don't agree with some things. It's that your mind needs to upgrade. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes. Yes. Mentally, if we ask you now, who is God? God is all powerful. God is all real. But can you believe him for your healing? As they say, if he wants to heal me, he will heal me. No. The arm of faith is, a faith is an arm that takes. While the arm of God is an arm that gives. I've shared that with you before, remember? Yeah. So let me try to, it's you that took me this far. I did not plan to go like this. But let's just start tonight from a scripture. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38... I want to speak, you remember last week we spoke about, who can remember what I spoke about? What? First things first. First things first. Thank you very much. And what was our first thing that we considered last week? Eh? Sanctification. Yes. Sanctification. A pure heart. Praise the Lord. A pure heart. Are you with me at all? Hope you are not, you know some people are not here. Hope you are not seeing my two. <laughs> because... Location. 
You know, you can be here and you are closing fridge at home. Yes, you can be here and something else is disturbing you. Maybe Lani Sobo is not ready, you know. You are saying, I hope it won't ferment, you know. <laughs> so let's start with Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Let's read everybody. One, two, go. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure of press down and shake it together. And run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that he met with all, it shall be measured to you. Amplify it, please, so that we, somebody can understand what measure all those things that they are saying. All right, let's read one more time, please. Don't get tired. Let's preach together. One, two, go. Give and gifts will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. There is a difference between I was given and I have received. There is a difference. It's not just English. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? If I stretch this thing to you, sir, you know I have given it to you. You know you have not received it. From my side, I am a giver. But you need to receive it. Please, did you get what I just said? Yes, sir. I don't want you to just be um, slow in understanding this if you hmm? Let's, If you don't understand, you go and watch the video. If I stretch out to you, I am giving. There is a different action. He received it. You know this thing can fall from my hand? Yes. But if he takes it, it's a different action. Some people are very careless. They stretch out their hand and say, I thought you have collected it. No. If you are serious about giving, you should check if I've received it. Yes, sir. Am I correct, please? Yes, sir. And the receiver should be expectant. I'm giving, he should be receiving. The reason I said so is that the scripture does not say, if you give, you will receive. People say that. The scripture says, if you give, it will be given to you. Whether you receive it or not is a different thing. Don't say what scripture did not say. It might sound very nice. Give and you shall receive. It sounds very nice. But that's not the concept of this scripture. Give and it will be given to you. Somebody will bring something to you as well. Whether you collect it or not is up to you. Aya. That's how it works. Somebody say, I gave Naira. Then someone else comes and gives you dollar. He says, it's Naira I want. Oh God, it's not my fault that you did not collect it. You were giving back. But you said, it's Naira you, you want. Your lineage likes Naira. Continue collecting Naira. <laughs> Please, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, so to be giving back is not robbery. And I think any giver should expect to receive. So in my study, I hit a statement that I, I like to say here that it is only normal that if anything leaves you, it will come back to you. Did you get that? Anytime anything leaves you, it will come back to you. And what I want to bring to your attention with that statement is that it is only expected that if you give God something, God will give you back. Yes, sir. It is unrealistic. No, please sit down. Sit down. Don't worry. She's not a stranger. Come and sit down here or sit down here and make the church beautiful. Get a chair. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. So, in giving, it's okay to expect receiving. So, it is very, very important that if some people say, I'm just giving the Lord because I love him. You are not being full. You are not, you are not being honest enough. Yeah. Say, we only came because of what we, what we can give you, Lord. Okay? The Bible says give and expect to get back. Yes, are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yes, now, I'm going to be teaching this a little philosophically and I'm going to get into it spiritually and scripturally also. So, let's follow it. So, what I want to draw your attention to first of all here is that there is a concept about giving. There is a concept about giving that is ubiquitous. That means it is generic globally. All right? That means it is something that we can accept exists as a truth globally. Giving is not a single sorted conversation. We give to our fellow human beings. We give to our bosses. We give to our subordinates. We give. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say here. And the Bible says that anybody who gives, it's an option. But anybody who does it says he can expect to be giving back. Did you get what I'm saying? So having established that, I want to speak to the subject that it is essentially about giving. And in giving, we know that giving is a good thing. Am I correct, please? Yes. It's a blessed thing to do. Now, scripturally, it's 
going to come into that conversation where we will have to talk about it in terms of doctrine. While giving is generally accepted, some people struggle with the difference between giving and generosity. Giving is an act. Generosity is a heart. When you give, you have acted. Generosity is a disposition. I may not have given anything, but I'm generous at heart. I don't know if you get what I just yes, said. Sir. So without anything leaving me, I am generous. And today, I want to, if you notice, I've been using that word more frequently in this church, that I want you to be generous towards God. Not just that I gave. Don't see giving as an obligation. See it as a lifestyle. Giving can be an act or a lifestyle. When it's a lifestyle, you have moved from just an act of, you know, giving to a heart of giving, which is generosity. Did you, you get what I said? Yes, sir. So the Bible says something in Proverbs 3. We have a lot to cover. So please, I need to see that you get it. I have, I've come to notice how I communicate. If I notice that it's not on your face that you get it, I'll still be trying to make you get it. So I need to see that you have got so I can move yes, fast. Sir. Please, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, Thank you. So the Bible says something in Proverbs 3. I read it yesterday, verse 27 and 28. It says, say not to a man. Look at it. It says, we do not good from him that is in need of it when it is due to him. When it is in your power to, to or power of thine hand to do it. Let's read it. Amplify classic. Mighty Lord. We do not good from those to whom it is due. It's rightful owners. When it is your power of your hand to do it. Say something like salary. Somebody helped you. Don't hold back when you can do it. Don't, don't say no, 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 no. It says it's not right. Look at next verse. It says, next verse 28. It says, say not to thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give when thou hast it by thee. It says, do not say to your neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. So what is this saying? It's trying to develop a heart and a cultivation of generosity. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? So I want you to see that the concept of giving, there are some doctrines of the Old Testament that are not necessarily repeated like the way it was mentioned in the Old Testament. And that is for a reason. So in the Old Testament, the scripture was written essentially to the Jews. They were all about the children of Israel. In the New Testament, we're talking to Gentiles. It's a global conversation now. Israel was God's nation. The whole world is God's people now. Yes, so the kind of things God introduced there, you will notice that he embellished it with some liberality. So the doctrine of Bible interpretation, and anyone who is hearing me who is taught of Bible theology, you will know that this is how it is done. That you are silent on the things Scripture is silent about, and you are loud upon the things Scripture is silent about, especially in the New Testament. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, so there's that rule. It's a, it's a rule of thumb that when Scripture is loud about something, you loud it up. When Scripture is not loud, you don't, you don't get louder than Scriptures. Some people get louder than Scriptures, and that's when they have problems. So the concept of giving starts from the Old Testament. It's true that generosity was the culture it was trying to inculcate here. It will interest you to know that this is the same Proverbs 3. We'll come back to it. Verse 9 that says, first fruits. So all of this scripture is talking about generosity. Not just the act of giving. Not just the act of giving. So you need to move from the concept of I gave, I give, I will give to the spirit of generosity. Can I hear your amen? amen? If I can successfully deal with that, then I want to show you something. In Bible doctrine interpretation, one of the principles says that in the essentials, we have unity. Everybody say after me, say in essentials, essentials. there is unity. Yes. What does that mean? That means in things that are important, we must all be unified. In non-essentials, there is liberty. Say that after me, say non-essentials, non there is liberty. Then say in the general, say in the general, in the general and in all things, and all things there, is there is charity. So let's run through it one more time. In essentials, there is unity. In non-essentials, there is liberty. And in all things, there is charity. Run that through me with one. Let's run it together one more time. Say in essentials, there is unity. In non-essentials, there is liberty. And in all things, there is charity. What does that mean? That means in the things that are essential, the body of Christ must stay one. You don't say your own and I say my own. No. For example, that Jesus is Lord is, a, is an essential. You don't say it's our privacy that Jesus is actually semi-Lord. There's nothing like that. It is an essential doctrine of faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is an essential. 
It's an essential. You don't, you, we don't, those are things we don't negotiate. They are non-negotiable on the table. They are not even on the table. They are not on the table for conversation. And they, being born again, you know, these are exclusive, distinct things. Because they bother on the subject of the foundations of faith. Are we together? Yes, sir. Then he says that in all things, we must have charity. When there's everything, maybe somebody is going to a church, they will remove their shoe. That's not an essential. That's not an essential. It will surprise you that God has worked with some people. Several times in scriptures, we see where God says, remove your shoe. Where you are staying is a, a holy ground. So that's why you see me. I don't condemn that uh, the, this, this bad church is bad. You, you don't know enough. Oh. It will shock you those that will appear in heaven. To shock you. You don't have an exclusive right to the understanding. Of, you don't. You don't. My own is stay where you are staying. Focus what you are focusing. Let Jesus be glorified. Yes, Can I hear your amen on that? Amen. So I'm starting with that conversation so that it will help someone's mind to understand that we're not just talking theory here. We're talking doctrine. Someone say doctrine. doctrine. Very important. Doctrine. To understand how we arrived where we arrived. How we got here in the first place. So the spirit is not just the act of giving. It is generosity. It is generosity. That you are generous towards God. That you are, of, you, you are not just giving of obligation. You are giving from love. You are giving from, from the joy of the relationship. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yes, Let me tell you something. No woman, no woman who is loved eh, likes that you are giving it to her like she's a problem to you. She might collect it too, but she doesn't like that way you give her. I, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say like I see, uh, you see, you've been stressing me. Take. She almost feels like saying, if you can't give it, don't, don't worry. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. I, I know some women differ. But let's, let's just take it. Let's take it for, you know, all things. There's the general charity. Amen. But, but I hope you get the point I'm trying to make. Yes, so what I'm saying is this, that for what it stands to gain is that we see that giving is a biblical doctrine. Do we agree with that? Please? Yes, sir. Now let me quickly advance it for that. The subject of giving, or generosity as I like to call it, is an issue that we've seen described in Old Testament. Now, for the sake of time, you can go and check it up. In Hebrews 5, the Bible says that the things that are in the Old Testament are types and shadows of the New Testament. In other words, whatever you see in the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the New Testament. How many of us agree with that, what I just said? Yes, the children of Israel are like types and shadows of the church. Are you aware? Are you aware? Ah, come on now. That Israel is like a type and shadow of the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, if you know that, let's, let me hear you. Amen. Amen. So there are certain things that we see as types and shadow. For example, repentance from sin. You see how God created a pattern, how they should repent. That when you sin, this is what you should do. Am I making some sense? Yes, sir. What they say they should do? They should get blood. They should get an animal. Bring it to the priest. The priest should kill sprinkle the blood upon them and take the animal sacrifice as burnt offering and then they send another one that is a sin offering out of the camp that was the routine all of that was consummated in Christ Jesus praise the Lord aha, aha. see what it says who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things that's talking about so in Luke I was saying let's just read uh, Amplified but this offer service that is service merely as a pattern and as a foreshadowing of what has its true existence and reality in the heavenly sanctuary. For when Moses was about to erect the tabernacle, he was warned by God saying, so to you that you did accept it. Now, so what he's saying is that what Moses was doing then was a foreshadow. It was like a reflection or a, a description or like a, what would I call it? Yeah, uh, eh? Eh? Model, eh? Blueprint, thank you, of what God wanted to happen in the New Testament. So look at how God operated. God started with Abraham went to Israel as a nation. And you know what I mean by Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he started with an individual as an entity. That individual became an, became an institution. Do you, you see the process? That institution became a nation. And then from that nation, God spread out to the whole world. It was a very deliberate thing, though, that God did not just start with the whole world. The whole world was in sin, self. Scattered everywhere. The process of recovering man was procedural for God. And he told them that, look, I'm not just going to jump at you. It's going to start first on Abraham. That's why they call Abraham today the father of faith. Even before Christ came, Abraham was the father of paradise. He could determine what will happen from paradise. Abraham is not your mentor. 
No play. A, a, an idol worshiper before, just believe in a, a God he cannot see. That was phenomenal for God. Fire. That was phenomenal. God has not recovered. Then God tested him one, tested him two, tested him three, tested him the last one. God said, ah, now I will swear that he bless and I will bless you. That I will never stop. And all the tests had something to do with giving. Ooh. All. So I'm trying to show to you that the concept of giving is more about the generosity. Yes, sir. It's more about the heart. So whether it is about uh, offering, tithe, or it is about generosity. The Bible says a man should not give what he does not have. He should give such as he has, not out of obligation. Have you seen that scripture before? Yes, Let's look at it. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Quickly, because of time, I will, uh, can I get a handkerchief, please, if you don't mind? No, so, so Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Quickly. Hurry up, please. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hold up. Thank you. It says, it says here, it says, let's, let's read from verse 6. Are we okay? It says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also. What is he talking about here? Sowing. What you sow, you will get. How you sow, you will get. Bountifully, bountifully will come back. Sparingly, sparingly we come back. There's no fraud in it. So it gives us the liberty to choose what we want to sow. And that's why I say that giving must not be made a must. If you, a man is giving outside of his will, it is, it is not right. Yes, I don't know the another name to call it. Consider my year. So giving is not something, it must come from your will. Let's, don't, don't leave it, don't look at it. Let's, let's look at what it says. Are you there? Let's go on, let's go on. See what it says. It says, Every man according as he proposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loved that cheerful giver. So he's saying, give. Let, don't let anybody force you. And that's why I don't force you here. Can I hear your amen? amen? Give from your heart. If we charge and challenge you, it's because we know that sometimes we need to encourage you to cross the normal gauge of your giving. Where else would you be encouraged to do that? It's the church. Nobody. I am the senior pastor of this ministry by the grace of God. I will not force anybody to give. This morning, Mama was posing for me with some money. I was like, Tell her, say, babe, if you're not giving me, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'm a man of means. I'll produce it. <laughs> you know, I was already, because I'm like, no, 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 no. If it's hurting your cash flow, you know, don't worry. I will deal with it. I have resources I just don't want to touch in the immediate. You know I'm a man of means. <laughs> Hope you know I'm a man of means. <laughs> you don't know who you are. See, so, so what I want to bring out here is that he says, it, it gives us the concept that it must be done willingly, not grudgingly, not complainingly. Not frustratingly. It's more of a heart of generosity. Do you see that in that scripture? It says, for God loves the cheerful giver. Before I come to the subject of tithing of fresh fruits, I want to deal with the spirit of giving in the first place. Because giving is a spirit. In fact, it's not just a spirit. It's a ministry. And I'm coming to that shortly. He said, let each one give as he has made up his, in his own mind and proposed in his heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. Nobody should be made to give against his will. Nobody. He says, for God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things, and is willing uh, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do, pro you see that word, prompt to do it, giver. Whose heart, whose heart, whose heart, are you with me? Yes, sir. Whose what? Heart yes. is in his giving. giving. Whose heart is in his giving. Whose heart is in his giving. And I want you to see that, that the Bible is telling us clearly here, it says that there's such a thing that your heart may not be in your giving. Your heart may not be in your giving. So some people give first fruits. I've given that first fruit before. It did not pay me oh, my sofa, my head. So, so no, no. I did not understand what happened to me. Nobody's stopping you. But it's because your heart is not in your giving. Yeah. That's why I said it's not about the act of giving. It's about the heart of giving. Yeah. Are we getting what I'm saying tonight? Yes, Good. Now, so on this note, let me quickly show you that giving is a ministry. Can I quickly show you that? Yes, Romans chapter 12 verse 6. Quickly, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's quickly do that on time. Roshankoba. Thank you. See what it says. Having then gives different according to the grace that is given to us. Let's read Amplified Classic straight up so that for time. It says, having gives faculties, talents, qualities that differ according to the grace given us. It says, let us use them. He whose gift is prophecy, let him prophesy according to the proportion of his faith. Read on. Or ministry. Or, um, he whose gift is practical service, let him give himself to serving. He who teaches to his teaching. Let's read on. He who exhorts, encourages to ex ex exhortation. He who contributes, eh, eh? Let him, 
Let him do it in simplicity and liberality. You see that word liberality? That's like saying generosity. He who gives aid and superintends with zeal and singleness of mind. He who does acts of mercy with genuine cheerfulness and joyful eagerness. These are the ministries of the Spirit. Oh. See what it says. Let's read KJV. Or he that exhorted and exhorted. He's talking about he that exhorts. His, uh, he that giveth. Let him do it with simplicity. Did you see that? Yes, so giving is a ministry. It's a ministry. When they say let us give, some people, is their ministry to give. Just like how some people's ministry is to usher. Some people have known it. That is their ministry. So when you don't give people a chance to give in church because you are embarrassed, you are making some people not fulfill their ministry. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. You, you are angry because you don't have. The giver is happy. Yes, yes. Which brings me to this next scripture. It's not a function of the giving. It's a function of who you are. See what the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians chapter, um, chapter 9, verse 10. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Quickly. See what it says. Chapter 9, verse 10. See what it says. Look at what it says. Please, please check it out. It says what? Now, he that me, let, let's read together, please, if you don't mind. And increase the fruits of your righteousness. Stop. So there's such a thing called fruits of righteousness. It says that he that ministered seed to the sower. It is not about um, the seed that you are giving. It's about that you are a sower or an eater. It's not about the seed that you are giving. Now, you may be thinking of bread as per loaf of bread. No. It's talking about what you can eat. That word bread there means eat. Do you understand? For example, beans is a seed. The same beans you can sow, you can plant. Am I correct? So that's why they call it bread. So when they say, now he that ministered seed. So God is the one that ministers, gives seed to the sower. And then he gives bread to the eater. That means there's an eater, there's a sower. Whatever comes to your hand is who you are that will make you do what you want to do with it. The sower sees seed that he should have eaten and sows it. Just like it is true about money. Somebody gets money, say, ah, money, maybe we'll go shop. Bring me dorime or something. Someone else sees the seed and says, ah, I need to buy government bonds. You see that it's not a function of the money. The money is amoral. But it's a function of your personality. Yes, there's one who is a squandra, who is an eater or an eater, whatever the correct English is. And then there's one who is a sower. Yes, he sows. So no matter what he gets, thank you very much. Well, no matter what he gets, he can sow with it. Are, are you with me tonight, please? Yes, he sows it. So even if you give him a uh, small, he will still see himself as a sower. No matter what you give, it's not about it's not about the quantity, it's about who he is. I don't know if you guys are getting what I'm saying. It's about who he is. So it says, and God will provide seed for the sower. So he's a sower before even the seed came. You have to be a sower before the seed comes. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? That? It says, who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating. So there are people who take their bread and eat. Now, the sower also needs bread. Thank you. Thank you. You may need to get a pack. Eh? And just keep it in church. So, God knows how to provide bread for eaters. What does that mean? The sower will not have to sow everything he has. Yes, he has to also make bread from the seed that God has given to him. So, it's not a function of what he has. It's a function of who he is. Yes, you are either a sower or an eater. An eater. <laughs> you know, for, for better English. Please, do you guys get what I'm saying? Yes, so it's more than just saying, ah, come and give your first. If you are a stingy person, you're a stingy person. Even to your parents, you are stingy. Even to yourself. I'm telling you, anybody who has been into the business of giving knows that there's a joy in giving. Yes. yes. If you know the joy, you will not hesitate. Yeah, that doesn't mean that everything you have, you just give. That's not foolishness. Yes. You know, Mama was telling me that sometimes she gets confused about my choices. That one time I would just bring her money and give, like as if Omo, life is large. And that time, somebody else that she thought I would give, I said, I'm not giving. I'm not giving. There's something, no, I'm not giving shishi. There's something in four minutes. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's not a function of that I gave. It's not a function that I did not give. It's a function of who I am. So you can't blackmail me because I did not give that I'm not a giver. That's why it says, let everyone give from his heart. Your persuasions, your convictions. Now let's come closer. So the essence of why I did all that is to make you understand that there's a personal place in your act of generosity. 
Concerning the subject of giving, your faith is required. Yes, sir. You must do it by faith. Yes, sir. You must do it by faith. Yes, sir. You don't blackmail God. I'm giving you. Oh, see what you got. You're like, after all, Cain also gave. Yes. Cain also gave. Why did God refuse it? God is not compelled to collect everything you give. He's not compelled. He has refused people's offering before. Yes, sir. And it's not the last. He's planning to reduce it and refuse another person's own. If it's not right, he will refuse it again. Mm. So not everything received in church here is accepted in heaven. You must understand that it was accepted in church. Doesn't mean God collected it. Yeah. Now, don't forget that the Bible also tells us about the liberality of our giving. It tells us how to give. That when you are giving, don't let your left hand even know that you are giving. That means there's discretion in it. There's some privacy. There's some personal devotion to it. Are we making some sense? Yeah. Now, because of this subject of giving, finances, and health, you notice that I keep telling you that focus on your health and your finances. Hope you know I keep telling you about yes, that. Sir. Yes. So you see that in scriptures, the Bible tells us about different ways by which we can be rich. I've said that before. Yes. Diligence, diligence makes the hand of a man rich. Yes, 29 18. It says that seest thou a man diligent in his works. Confirm it for me. Am I correct? This is when 9 18. It says Proverbs. It says that says thou a man diligent, he shall stand before kings and not mere men. Yes, Am I correct, please? Yes, uh-huh. So. Amen. Are you, are, you, are you trying it out? Okay, no, this is uh, our vision. Help me check that scripture. Is, is it 28 something? It says, See, is there a man diligent in his work? He says, He shall stand before kings and not mere men. So there's such a thing, eh? 22, 29. Okay, thank you. I think I mixed it up. Sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, see, I see. Do you see a man diligent as evil in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. That means he will be standing in royalty. Not just standing. He will be doing stuff with them. Do you understand? When you are diligent. So diligence can make you bear riches. The Bible says that the hands of the diligence makes fat. Diligence bears you know, resources. However, that is a natural way of prospering. What did I say? A natural way of prospering. Why do I say so? Jesus was talking in Matthew 6. He said, stop worrying about what you will eat, what you will wear, what you will do this. He said, stop it. He said, that's what ordinary people. He said, for such things do the Gentiles seek after. Do you remember that scripture? Let's go there. Matthew 6, 22. He says that stop worrying for what to eat, what to wear, what to drink. You know, uh, I say? the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, the eye is single. The whole body will be full of light. Let's go on. And therefore, I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink or no. Yet for your body, what you shall put on is not life, the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. You see, you see the way he's asking the question rhetorically. He's saying that there's life more than I said, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands. And yet, Heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than them? Let's read on. He said, which of them or which of you, by taking a calculation, to, of tomorrow can add one cubit to his stature by worrying and being anxious can add one unit of measure cubit to his stature or to the span of his life he said what amongst you read on let's go on we're going to 33 hurry up he says next verse okay yeah. he said why should you be anxious about clothes you see that consider the lilies of the field and learn thoroughly how they grow they need a tall nor spin he says yet i tell you even solomon in all his magnificence excellence dignity and grace was not arrayed like one of these let's read on he said but if god so clothes the grass of the field which today is alive and green and tomorrow is tossed into the furnace will he not much more surely clothe you or your little stop faith what does this mean God is saying, move your attention from self-survival mode to God. Yes, sir. Let it be God that will take care of you. That's what he's saying. That if animals and grasses can let God take care of them, and God has not filled them, he said, you too as human beings should learn from them how God can take care of you. He's saying that you cannot take care of yourself as well as God can take yes, care sir. of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this question of giving and generosity and worry is a subject of faith. And every man, every man has to have his own level of faith. It's a faith conversation. It's a faith conversation. You see that I'm not approaching this thing from doctrinally, but I'm going to show you scriptures that's in Old Testament scriptures. I'm going to do that just for the sake of somebody who says, Pastor, not show us, I will show you. But I'm, I'm approaching it from a pragmatic angle. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yes, so it's a subject of your faith to trust God that God is my supplier. Yes, God is my provider. God is the one that I count on. Not just in terms of theory, but in practical sense. Mm. Because he's saying that, look, these birds don't bother. Yes, God provides for them. Let's quickly read it to that three. Let's read on. It says, but if God, okay, therefore do not, okay. Okay, this is the next one. 
31. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious, saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to have to drink? He said, or what are we going to wear? <laughs> for the Gentiles, he says, unbelievers, heathen, wish for and crave and diligently seek all these things. He said, don't be at the same league with them. Don't run the rat race. That if you run that rat race, and even if you win, you are still a rat. He said, don't think like a rat. He said, and your heavenly father knows well that you need them all. So the problem is unbelief. You don't really believe that God can take care of you. So what do you do? Your salary, I'll take care of myself. And Elon is shedding now. 5,000. You don't believe. You don't believe. You don't believe. You don't believe. I don't rush you. I don't like that. I don't like your own face. You know, and, and if you look, they will make you feel reckless yes. for trusting God. Whereas you're trying to step up, and if you can't believe God for basic things, how would you tell me that you believe God for a wife? Uh, look, let me just tell you something. Reality is, as you grow older, become stronger. Yes, sir. You, you, you don't, don't deceive yourself. If you can't trust God for basic shoes that you can do without for tomorrow. <laughs> That's how some of you, you want to get married with your brain. It will burst. Nobody can survive anything great by his brain. Yes, we are designed to malfunction. Wow. There's a level to which man was designed to function in his own capacity. At a certain level, he begins to malfunction. Just like a laptop, there's a temperature issue. If you have a good phone, it will tell you I can no longer charge. Yes. If I go beyond this level, I will explode. That's how man is. You have your limits, sir. You have your limits. And God is saying, take the limits off. Let me take that off you. There's a journey of faith. That's why it is my job to challenge your faith. It's my job. As a man of God that doesn't want to, to be leaned on and say, yeah, where's pastor? That's why you can't call me anyhow. Go and listen to my teaching. It will, provi it will provide direction for you. Go and listen. That's why I can sleep at night. Yes, because some people, I'm telling you, sir, some people small that one spider walked on their body. Almost problem, oh. Pastor, pastor, pastor. And, and yes, you too, pastor. What did you say? We blind the blood of Jesus. The blood of God. Go and hear my message. Are we together, please? So it says, for the Gentiles seek after these things, which and crave daily after these things. Give us the next verse. Now look at what it says. It says, but see, you know the word bet is a change. That's why some of you, you are so be used to buying everything in your life, you are never comfortable with anybody buying anything for you. You just believe that you must suffer for everything. That shoe, I bought in 1985. And you think it's a testimony. So you're boasting that you have bought everything yourself. Let me just tell you something. It's a, lack, it's a sign of lack of favor. When you have to buy everything for yourself. Don't deceive yourself. If all you spend is your salary, God is not yet with your finances. So I work hard. That's not what God wants for you. That's not how I walked, went to the pastor. He said, Please take anything, sir. I said, You really mean it? He said, Pastor, try me. <laughs> that pastor, Maxwell, that came, that pastor is from Brazil. We entered one of the biggest luxury shops where very few blacks in that shop. He said, Man, I will please just pick on anything. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> Because I like that Jesus did not dodge this subject. Yes, He's talking about that. Look, guys, I know you need a t-shirt. Yeah. I know you need a Louis Vuitton. Yeah. I know you need a Bulgari. I know you need a Christian Louis Vuitton. I know you need all those things. He said, but let me take care of it. He now says, this is your part. You do this part. Yeah. And I told you that any Christianity that relinquish all the responsibility to God is irresponsible Christianity. You must have your part. God will have his part. So look what it says. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. His way of doing things and being right. What is God's way of doing things? Faith. Someone say faith. If it is not of faith, it's not of God. 
Yes, sir. Let me just tell you. If your finances is not driven by faith, it's not of God. Mm-hmm. Ask mama now. Several times I've told her, let's sow this seed. Sometimes you're like, Bishop, are you sure we can do this? I say, yes. The money no rich. <laughs> let's even just put the logic to it. That's how some families stay in one spot. You can meet them like vegetable for 25 years. They've never taken a step of faith. They've never used their faith to do anything. They live in one household and they are proud. I believe in that house. We came here to this street first. You see that street? Where it, was, it was on time. It was on time. We are the ones. When they went, when they moved, this house was not there. This house was not there. This house was not there. You have never risen by faith. You have never grown by faith. Look, some people, I'm telling you the truth, sir. If you stay in that house, you are staying, and you don't by faith rise up, you will die, dear sir. You see, you say, you say, you say, you say, you say. God wants to, man, if you're faith, that's why I say it's a journey of faith. You have to make up your mind that I'm not going to be like this, sir. I'm not going to die like this, sir. I'm going to go forward in my life. I'm going to go forward in my life. The, this is your place safe. This is your place safe mode. We kill you somewhere. So your aunts will do better than you. They change location. You have not changed. See, let me just tell you something. It's a journey of faith. It's a journey. You have to get to that point where you say, Lord, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I, I know you are not lying to me. If you don't get to that point, you'll be struggling with your logical mind. Your brain will say, wave. You say, oh, man, oh, man, make the brain. Stop you. Now, they see people. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You will never see God. You will never see God. You don't think you are smart. You don't think, ah, oh, man, nobody can confuse me. Oh, man, you don't just talk around me. Oh, man, you don't just talk you. Because the way you give it matters. Yes, sir. After that giving that thing, you will trek. But it will be with joy. Yes, sir. Yes, glory sir. to God. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. If, yes, you don't have, if you don't have a seed in the ground, you don't have a harvest in your future. Yes. Only, it's, it is mischievous yes, to be thinking of having harvest yes, when you don't have no seed. You are a criminal. Yes. You, are like, you are like Esau. After selling his birthright, right, he wants to still get it. You eat that seed. You ate it, you still want to get the harvest. When others were sowing, you were eating your own. I'm telling you the truth. And that's why it says it's a faith thing. Let everybody do as he wants. So if you want sparing me, you not even like this. Turayo does not help. If you come to my house, Turayo does not help us. You buy meat. Her destiny is to finish it. She's not playing with you. You had better buy plenty. See, as a man, if you don't hold your side, I don't know why you want to succeed with this, your Lagos and Nigeria. You de- don't you see that Bolly woman is also complaining about dollars? Everyone's complaining about dollars now. <laughs> yes, Bolly woman that they buy planted from Ghetto, he's saying dollars has gone up. Why? Because life gets darker. Before you pray against it, the Bible says darkness shall cover the earth. I know. Are you praying against prophecy? <laughs> So I want to challenge you, sir. Let your faith rise. Yes, sir. If your guarantee for successful living is money, then you, God is not involved in it. I know. Yeah. Please take your seat. Let me learn this thing. Glory to God. Glory to God. So please, back up a little bit to verse 22. 22 to 24 and 25. You see, I just want you to understand some of the arguments. Don't help people argue. Don't follow people to argue. Sometimes you're talking, talking, talking. Mix. Please, let me just look for the scripture so that I save myself time. That it says you cannot serve two masters. You either serve God or mammon. Please, it's there. It's that Matthew 6. So I want you to see that. Stop arguing or telling everybody your secret. Uh-huh. Verse 24. It says, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God. And Satan was not the alternative. Ah. It's money. Mammon is not Satan. It's the God of money. Money has a God, just like adultery has a God. You know, there are all these things are spiritual things. So he says you cannot serve God. Jesus talking, Jesus the Son of God. He did not even put himself beside it. You cannot serve God and mammon. There are two things you can serve. You are either serving God or money. 
That's what I'm not the one that said it. I want you to stop, stop reading your head into scripture. Yes, sir. Let scripture read itself to you. Because yes, some people have a way of just saying that's not you reading your brain. Into, you see what too much. So mass money is a master. It's a master. So he's saying that whatever you do, God only wants to use as a way of blessing you. God, that's why he says that the blessing of the Lord, what does it do? Yes. It is the blessing that comes upon the works of your hands. That's what God wants to achieve. Hallelujah. Praise God. God. So this principle holds true for everything. It holds true for marriage. It holds true for health. It holds true for everything. It's a journey of faith. Say after me, say it's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. Say it properly, say it's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. Now let's quickly make some progress. Now, on that note, let me quickly now switch into the concept of generosity. Now, there are different kinds of givings in scriptures. Are, are we together? Number one, we have the general offering. There's what we call the general offering. It's referred to, and like I said, Old Testament gives us the background for what New Testament looks like. It's the general offering that people give, and it's okay. And let me just remind you that it is about faith. It is about faith. It's about, but God classifies that people's stretching. What you do in Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. Do you remember that scripture? Yes, sir. That's, I'm sure they will give us in media. It says, whatsoever a man sows. So it tells us about two gods. Then it now says, do not be deceived. That means we can be deceived. That though God is love. God is love. See, let me tell you something. God loves you. He gave God's love for you will never change. He has already yes, fulfilled it. Yes, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes, See, after me say, God's love for me, God's love for me will, never will never reduce. It's not the question of your love for God that we are asking. Your love for God. God's love for you can be pure, but your love for God must be demonstrated in your giving to. Yes, sir. God loves you to not change. Nothing can separate the love of God. But how much of that love you express is tied to your own generosity? Hmm. Let's make some progress. Now, go back to this scripture. Let's, let's start today's conversation on first. Let's, I said there are different kinds of giving. I said there's the general giving, there's the tithing, and there's the first fruits. Now, because tonight I intend to teach on the first fruits, I'll go straight to first fruits. Is that okay, please? But I'll just, you know, I don't think the concept of generosity can can be further explained than I've explained it. So, there's the principle of tithing. Now, let me say this. The, 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 don't forget that we said that in essentials, there's unity. In non-essentials, there's what? Liberty. And in the all things, there's charity. What that simply means that there are some things that we will not hold down against anybody. There are some churches that they don't take offering. But you and I know that they are not doing them good. There's a blessedness to giving. Even unbelievers know it. Yes. 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 There is. There is. Let me show you something. Can, can I just quickly show you something before this next scripture? Just to along. Let's go to um, Haggai. Haggai chapter 1, verse 6. Glory to God. So this thing is a struggle. You know how man feels he has, we've, been, we've lived with so much depravity, they think that it is more, we are more fortunate. That's why we are talking about giving. That pastor, you don't know my rent. You don't know my bills. Pastor, if you know how many people I'm feeding, that's why you need to cast it to God. Because yeah. you can't do it alone. Yeah. You are putting those people before God. There is such a thing called the system of this world and the system of God. If you continue the way the world does it, you are plugged to the system of the world. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, sir. Yes, sir. To, to unplug from the system of the world, you have to do some things. Yes, sir. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. You earn salary, you have to use it for what you have. This is where you are. You will remain at that level. Low. Yes, you, you know how people are traveling around to go and say, you say, how do they get money? That's how you be asking questions. How are you people getting money? How are you, how are you people making How are you people making it? How are you people doing How are you people here? They don't say you are retiring. Don't let me talk. I, I know what I'm saying. That's why you need someone to mentor you through these things. Because people want to obey God, but they're afraid. They don't know about it. They don't want anyone to cajole them. And I assure you, I'm not the person that will cajole you. So look at what it says. See, see, look at what it says here. It says, you have so much. Can we look at it together? Can we see? It says what? You have so much. That means you have labored much and bring in little. Huh? It says, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. 
He clothes you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it to a bag with holes. Voila, day. So, let's go on. He said, Thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. What is the house? His house. He said, and I will be glorified, said the Lord. He said, so look at it. He says, he says, you look for much harvest and behold, it came to little. And even when you brought that home, I blew it away. Ah. <sighs> I, I, did I write Bible? Is this my... Yeah. <laughs> he now says, don't, don't, don't. He says, he says, this is what he says. He said, why? He's asking the question. He's, he's trying to answer in rhetoric. Why did I do that? He says, yes, the Lord of hosts, because of my house, which lies waste, while you yourselves run each man to his own house, eager to build and adorn it. Everybody's fixing his own house, fixing mm. his own stuff. He says, I'm going to buy some jeans. He says, we'll just buy some, we'll do this. He says, my own house is in waste, and I'm the one that gave me money. Mm. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed, God forbid, from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruits. So what is causing fruitlessness? Lack of generosity to God's house. See what it says. And I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which bringeth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of thy hands. Why am I showing you this scripture? I want to show you that God is interested in your generosity. Yes, sir. That's what I'm trying to show with this scripture. God is interested. Don't say no, no, God, God understands. He understands, eh? But he's going to limit your own prosperity. God does not collect from you to keep you small. He collects from you to enlarge your heart and trust you with more. Yes, sir. That's how it works, with more. With more. With more. So let's go to that scripture. Now, let's quickly read that Proverbs 3, verse 10. Um, 10 and then Nehemiah chapter 10. And then we'll see where God helps us to tonight. Are we getting blessed already, please? Yes, you see why I know that the devil didn't want me to come here. He wanted me to, you know. So let's start with um, Proverbs 3, t- verse 9 and 10. 9 and 10, quickly. So let's read it together. See the word there, active word. Everybody, what's the active word there? Let's go, one, two, go. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thy of all thine increase. Why? Look at the next verse. So shall thy bands be filled. So your storage places, that's your bank accounts. FBN, uh, FMBN, FMBC. It's your storage places. Be filled plenty. with plenty, and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. If you believe God, your response to be this scripture is, Lord, be it unto me according to you. Hey! That you mean if I honor you, that my vats, my storage houses will be filled? I have a few. For almost every account I have, I have it in dollars, pounds, and yen. And, 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 and what's the last one? And hero, hero. Yeah? That your storage places will be filled. That your storage places, may your storage places be filled. Amen. Look, this same thing I'm teaching is what we hear from Kenneth Copeland's mouth. It's a faith lineage. Now, listen to me. The reason why it is not imposed is that some people don't like it. Some people, money makes them backslide. I'm not just one of them. Money does not make me backslide. Because if money can make me backslide, Satan will give me plenty. Mm-hmm. Hey. Ah. Okay. Okay. That is going backslide now. by now. Ah, if we'll, if we'll, if we'll, he will lose his salvation. So, listen. With more, you can do more. Yes, more you can. This, this thing that makes you miss church is because you are looking for money. This thing that makes you not, not be able to do as much as you want is that you don't have enough. Mm. And I want to invite you to something. To learn to trust God. And I'm not only talking about God does not give you money back because you give money. Yeah. God gives you all blessings. Yes, sir. All blessings. Yes, sir. Blessings that money can buy and blessings that money cannot buy. Yes, if you have money and your spouse and you are always fighting, you know you almost pay somebody so that you guys can stop your fight. Yes. She be married. Or your child is sick. What do you do to that? Who would you, who would you not pay? <laughs> who? 
There are some things that only God can keep a man on. Yes, sir. Only God. Only God. Sir. Only God. When I say only God, I mean only. Not He's not sharing his face. That's why God says, I am God and there is none beside me. Yes. Some of us have our bank accounts beside God. Mm. Our God beside God. And let's be practical. I am God and there is none. You can be faithful in every other thing. But once it comes to survival, you must let it go, sir. Yes, sir. If you are still at survival mode, you will not succeed. To succeed, you must drop survival to God. Yes, sir. You must. What is survival mode? That act of self-dependence, self-effort. Let it go, sir. Yes, Let sir. it go. I was there before. Yes, I know the struggle. I know the struggle. I'm telling you how it works. Some people will beg and pay price and to be told this is what I'm telling you tonight. Let's quickly run. So we see here that the Bible says that it's about honor. Honoring the Lord with our substance and the first fruits of our increase. Let's quickly see Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 35. Quickly. Quickly, let's just quickly run through as I bring it to a close. Thanks for being patient. Let's run through. Neymar 10, 35. Neymar 10, 35. Quickly. So it's now telling us about different kinds of honor, givings. It says first fruits is one. See what it says here. It says, and to bring the first fruits of our ground. Are you seeing that? Yes. And the first fruits of all fruits of all trees. Year by year. Unto the house of the Lord. It's an act of faith. This was Nehemiah. Now, some people quote Nehemiah. Nehemiah repaired the walls, built the walls of God. When he reached first fruit, he said, No, no, leave that one. It's Old Testament. <laughs> eh? Is it not the same Nehemiah that built the walls and gave first fruits? They just finished spending their money on building wall, church wall, and building the church. Why are they giving first fruits again? Because there is a blessedness in it. He knows that if they don't do it, they can't go far. See, he says, What? Verse 36. Also, the first one of our sons and all our cattle and his the first one. Uh, let's, okay, let's just save some time here. And it says, and look at what it says, and unto the priest that minister in the house of our God. That's the verse you bring it to. Your priest. Let's quickly read another, two script, another set of scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy 26. Let's run. Let's run. Deuteronomy 26. You bring it to the house of your God. Now, I know that there's a video training where a pastor was saying stuff and all of that. Um, I am of the opinion that the pastor must have been trying to communicate to his audience. I am of the opinion also that a live discussion, you know, for example, when I stopped and said, give me tissue now, it's not something I wish would be aired. Yes, it's not everything that is said here. It's appropriate here. But it's not something that you expect to be aired. I am of the opinion that something said to your live audience is not necessarily what should go on media. Yes, true. I am of the opinion that that man's conversation was with his church. Yes, because if you listen to the end of it, he was making a boast in his God. And he said, like, if it doesn't work for you, I will give you back the money. I'm not, I don't know him all, and I'm not defending him. I'm just saying I know some people are uncouth in how they talk. I know some things also should not be broadcasted on media and that it is done, but that's not for me to judge. I pray that our media will be final. See what it says. Deuteronomy 26. Let's take a look at what it says. And it shall come, it shall be, uh, there's a lot inside. Let's read, let's read. It's okay, let's read. Quickly, let's read. Everybody wants to go. And it shall be when thou come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance and possesseth it and dwellest therein, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruits of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou shalt put in a basket and shalt go unto the place which the... So you put it in a basket and go to the place which the Lord has shall choose to place his name there. That is your church. Virtues. You take it there. Mumu man. Yes. Where are you carrying these things to? Are they come? First of all. Then he now says, uh, are we in, is the next verse? Place where the Lord has present. Uh -huh. He says, and you shall, and thou shalt go unto the priest, and thou shalt you shall be in those days, that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this. So look at look at it, please, please. Please don't sleep. Please listen. He says, This is where it says, He said, I profess this day, the Lord thy God, that I am come unto the country, that is where I am today, which the Lord swore unto our fathers to give to us. I'm, I'm here today because of God that has brought me here. Are you getting what I'm saying? That, that's the spirit of what he's saying. Let's read on verse 4. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it before the, 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 the altar of the Lord. Did you see that? I'm to collect it and keep it. For my discretional use. That is the truth. Now let me explain something to you. A, a honest pastor should not go and be buying yacht when his 
members are struggling with life. What do you think? Because if it is true that your sheep, you will care for them also. Am I, am I correct, sir? Yes. So, but that principle is there. And God will judge that man according to his actions. Yes, sir. But you do your own part. Mm. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. Don't, don't take the, the correction rod of your man of God into your hands. Yes, don't. Yes, Leave it to him and God. Yes, sir. God will judge him. Yes, sir. God will judge him. Yes, and let me tell you something. When God judges, you almost wish that man judged you. Hey. You almost wish that, Lord, I do not know. So he says, and the, the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand and set it before the altar of the Lord thy God. Let's read on. And you shall say before the Lord, oh, I'm reading KJV. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went, that means you reevaluate your life. Look at how God has helped me. See what the Lord has done. I came to Lagos. Now I have a car to ride. No way. I what I was waiting. Do you know how many people have come to this Lagos? Whether you borrowed it or they were given to you, some, nobody can even borrow them. She means because you have credibility, social credibility, they can give you money. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. For anybody to invest in you, it's because you have social credibility. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to tell you that don't undermine what God has done. So this guy is saying, Lord, see what you have done for me. I have so just see how far I have come. Look at how you have helped me. This is the first of what I have gotten year by year. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yes, sir. Let's read on. You can see that, my dear. So it says, became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Read on. Next verse. And the Egyptians and evil entreated us and afflicted. So go and read Deuteronomy 26. I want to try to wrap up on time. Let's quickly read just two more scriptures or three more scriptures. Leviticus 23 from verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is this doing some good to somebody's heart here? Yes, sir. You see, that's why they say it's about gratitude. Gratitude. It's about gra that graciousness of spirit. Leviticus 23 from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, let's read on. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation, even these are my feast. Let's go on. It says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh, go on, please. Let's save time, please. Go on. It says, these are the feasts of the Lord, even on, in the 14th day of the first month of the year. Go on, please. Go on. Go on. You see where first fruit starts. I think that's from verse 9 and 10. Go on, please. Go on. Go on. 9 and 10. Aha, uh -huh. stop here. It says, speak unto the children and say unto them, when you become, when you become, I need to drink some water, please. Sorry. Hallelujah. Thank you. It says, When you become into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto into the, the priest. Unto who? The priest. I want to see that this is a fourth type of what God had ordained. Let me tell you something. Somebody say, the, the, um, It's the Old Testament. God said, Do not worship any other God. Um, except me. Do you say that's Old Testament? No. It's a description of what he still wants till now. It is the mode of worship that has changed, not the things God preferred. Hello? Yes. And that mode of worship changed because we are Gentiles to the Jews. Do you understand what I'm trying to say by that? Yeah. God is speaking no longer to Jews. He's speaking to the whole world through the epistles. So the mode of worship has changed because some people used to smoke in go before, worship idol, do all manner of things. God said, don't worry. I will take them as they are. Mm. But the things that give me pleasure, I will not stop receiving it. Mm. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. For example, Jehovah Rapha. He's still Rapha. You know, it's Old Testament. Ezekiel 17, uh, Exodus 20, uh, 15, 26. It's Jehovah Rapha. He's no longer Jehovah Rapha. No! He's still the God that wants to heal you. Am I making some sense? Yes, so the same way he had pleasure in man's generosity towards him, he still has that same pleasure. And like you know, if you read the scripture well, there are different types of giving. The general seed, the tithes, the first fruits, all of them have different classifications. Let's quickly run and then I go to two more scriptures and I close. So speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when you be coming to the land, I will give unto you and shall reap. Go on, it says, sheep of first fruits. That's there. It says, and you shall, um, on the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. It says, you shall to be accepted for you, and he shall the next day he will wave it unto the Lord and say, Father, we thank you. Now, we're not going to carry it and say, Wave your offering, dollars. No, 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 no. It's the reception of it and turning it unto God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. So I'm saying this because some people like to excuse where it is convenient and choose the one that they prefer. Oh, God. 
That's why I say, don't be deceived. You are not clever. God is not mocked. What you sow, you shall reap. Finish it. See, let's go. <laughs> let's go. So let's quickly go to another scripture just because of time. Let's quickly read Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 30, and Ezekiel 48, 17, 14. Okay? Okay, blame of the person. Yeah. Let's go. Just skip. You can go read it up at home. You note it down and go and read it. I want to close on time. Or <laughs> at least as soon as possible. So look, let's quickly read Ezekiel 48, verse 14, and Ezekiel 44, 30. So fine. And the first of all, the fruits. And so this scripture has a storyline. Oh, eh? If you can, go and check it up and get acquainted with it. And the first of all, the fruits of all things, and every oblation of all, of every sort of oblation, of your oblation, shall the priest, you shall give also to the priest, the first, you see the priest again, unto what? The priest. Oh, help me now. Yes, sir. You shall also give unto who? The, the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thine house. Why? Why? Why not just bless him directly? <laughs> so those that don't give it, they still want the blessing? Okay. How now? Say God loves me. He loves you. But there's a part you need to demonstrate also. His love is irrevocable. But your blessing <laughs> is um, subjective. <laughs> because some people really don't want to be rich. And God will not force you to what you don't want. Do you know that? You know that David said that prayer. He said, Lord, don't let me be too poor so that I don't steal. He said, don't let me be too rich so that I will not forget you. You remember that, that prayer? So people have different appetites of life. I can't force uh, Minister Victor now to eat the food I must eat. Even though that's, that's a joke. You know what I'm saying? The guy will do very well. You know what I'm saying? But you can't force a man's appetite. You shouldn't. Quickly, let's run through. So this is just to point out, you say, the priest and rest in your house. He said, you shall also bring to the priest the first of your cost meal and all that. Let's go to the next one, 48, verse 14. And then I'll just show you something and then we close. Please. And they shall not sell of it, neither exchange nor alienate the first fruits of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. Did you see that? Don't, don't touch it. Don't touch it. If it was an agricultural environment, say, don't sell it. This first one is for the Lord. Why? So that the rest can enjoy the blessing. So that the blessing can You can say, no, that I'm not, I'm not, I, let me repeat. Let me repeat. The Christian is not susceptible. Sorry, please. The Christian is not susceptible to curses. Please, did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. If you buy a car and you don't insure it, does not mean that you are, you are, are police will arrest you. But God bless you. God bless you. You hit someone. Then you will know the value of insurance. What I'm trying to say is that that your car is not insured doesn't mean to not drive. You will still do very well. Everything is going well. But it is in the day of need. So I want to point out that there is no cost on you but the blessing is withdrawn. You know that before, if you don't give it, the blessing comes. If you don't give it, if you don't give it, cost comes. Now there is no more cost. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the law. For it is written, cost is that man that hanged upon a tree. So we are free from causes. But your life that is free from causes does not mean it is present with blessings. Not it. You are free from curses. It does not mean you are blessed, sir. Nobody is cursing you. But what will you do with your freedom? That's when you now take the liberty for God. Please, do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yes, sir. Listen to me, wives. Sometimes men are very stubborn. They don't get this thing on time. Better help them. So that your family will not be complaining when others are testifying. Men, there are some wives that are witches. They think they love you. They want to care for you more than necessary. Be wise. Nobody will beat you if you don't. I promise you, I will love you, even though practically, logistically, I know your limit of faith, so I will not engage you at some level. That's just what I can assure you. I, I know where your level reach. I will not push you more than your faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Because if you cannot handle ordinary thousands, how do you want to handle millions? I can't bring you to your room and start to talk about you. You say, what are we doing? There was a brother like that in this church who was one time at me. He loved me so much. Love me so much. So much he would give anything for me. I don't want to exaggerate. He's one of my best at me. At me. I don't want to mention him. Very lovely, matured man. Ministry conscious. Guess what? His wife one day said to tell him, 
Ah, he said every time you go to pastor, he said every time you start to do this, all oh, this your zeal is too much. Ah, the guy said, when I was with club, you complained. This man has been with me, helped our family, joined us together, helped us to stay stable. You know we would have been divorced by now. Hey, it's not like that. I'm not saying you should not go to him. You know women, they've sown the seed. Small time, the guy just came. One day, so I'm, I'm finding some difficulty. I'll just be trying. I'll be combining. Ah, I said, what's wrong? You know how you just notice something has changed. Then, one day, the big one came. He said, he doesn't believe we should be staying in a church hall that we are spending too much money, 600000 every month. Where do we want to get that money from? That's the admin of this church. He doesn't think he's right. I said, oh, God, stand up. You are admin, I'm the pastor. You understand? Stand up. Your opinion is a suggestion, yeah. not a recommendation. Yeah. You can't come and come and to be recommended to my destiny what course I should do. Before you came, I was paying one million every month. Where were you? One million, Ruby. Eh? The guy, the guy looked at me. Guess what? It was his wife that had polluted his mind. That had, so you'll be surprised how the ancient that that he cast us that he cast us You'll be like, ah, mama, I lie. Ah, ah. That he cast us That he, when she needed help, you see me to carry my jeep that time. Explorer. Hey, go, 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 go. Ah, I went, Hey, what's the matter? The Lord bless you. The guy come on and says, sir, this my wife is my cause between me and you. Not that I guessed. He came to pick me from here for that day. He says, sir, it's my wife causing us problem. I won't lie to you, sir. I repent. I ask for forgiveness. I say, hey, this sister, that me, I was fighting you over, that I was telling that you should pay attention to her. Let me tell you something. I'm saying this to God, and I stand before God and man. They have not recovered from that instructions I gave them. Still like they are still struggling, looking for the loophole. You would think that because you left, you see, it's instructions that makes you rise. God was saying something earlier on this morning. I was just with him today. If you listen to instructions, listen, if after this fast, and I agree with that man of God that said it, if after this fast, you don't come out with instructions, then you are not yet being blessed. This fast should produce specific instructions. What you do about your business. What you should do about your family. What you should do about... Oh, don't, don't just think it's just fast. A fast end, oh, your harvest will be in the air. <laughs> instructions. This one I was talking with him already. I was telling him what to do. I said, look, young man, the kind of money you, you need, if you go into ministry like this, you'll be distracted. You cannot succeed like this already. You need to settle the money question. Is that what I told you this morning? You must settle the money question. Otherwise, when you go into ministry, you'll be raising up free for your pocket. Yes. That's why I can do ministry now. I can tell you, carry the offering, no problem. I'm looking at you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's wrap up this discussion. So, for the purpose of this teaching, I will have to wrap up here. Obviously, I have to wrap up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, let me close with this. What are the practical ways of your generosity in giving? I recommend for the general offering that you set out an amount proportional to your size. If you what you can afford now, is 1,000. Don't feel bad. Yes, sir. Don't feel bad. Yes, sir. That's your size now. The same way it is wrong for you to go and pick up a shirt with all your salary. Yes, sir. It's the same way you should not be giving all your offering without planning. Mm. Hear what I just said? I said so. That's irresponsible generosity. If I finish giving you, I will not be begging from you. No. The responsible thing is I give with a plan. So, plan what is responsible. A decent average. A decent aggregate. I don't know the math English now. That is consistent with your size. General offering. General offering, General offering please. General offering. Every Sunday, I will give... I mentioned my own last time. I've increased it though. I've increased it because I know some of you are trying to match me now. <laughs> I've increased my own too. Yes. I mentioned my own. 5,000 every month. I've increased it. Sometimes I give 50,000 in a service. It's not tied to oh. offering. Uh -huh. What is that? If you're impressed, don't make me get depressed. Mm -hmm. Somebody's giving $5,000 every appearance. Mm -hmm. Every service. You will say there's no giving. Let me let's tell you something. There is something about generosity to God. Yes, sir. Don't be deceived. Yes, sir. Don't be deceived. Is your stinginess fighting this discussion? Oh? Yes, sir. Why not say you should... 
that you gave church. Don't think that yeah, you say, I gave church, I gave man of God. Is that you don't, you are not in Christ. If you are in Christ, you know that in this church, you don't give man. It's God you gave. Yes, sir. I understand all this bad, bad thinking. You source your ideas from social media. Then you give us assignment to be correcting your thoughts. Is it me that told you to watch the video? Is it my fault that you cannot undo what you watched? Don't put me under that pressure. I'll just tell you the truth and let Jesus be glorified. So please, your generosity should have a planning. Don't just give God the offering they give you from Okada or Marwa or uh, Korogwe or Korogwe. Do you understand what I'm saying? Just say, this is what they give me and change. I'll just put it aside. No. In 2024, be more decent. Have a proactive plan that says, this is my minimum offering. I will engage it. Transfers are better, self. Sometimes, ushers will see what people are giving and they ask, is it tight? Or is it offering? <laughs> or is it first fruits? <laughs> no, it's someone's offering. Your mind has to rise, sir. Yes, sir. Can I hear your amen? amen? Your mind has to rise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Unbelievers believe more than some of us believers. Yes, sir. When you tell them this can happen, they say, yes, no problem, let's go. You need to see the generosity of unbelievers. They know that for their sins, God will forgive them. If they give, they understand the communication of their substance. The Christians say, oh, more, let's be practical. Let's be, that's, you see, let me just say, that's why I say, believers, when are you ready for this God? This, this deception we are just calling Christianity that is not yet clear, is going to give us a problem. One day people will start to ask practical questions. And I'm telling you, the Christianity that lacks risk is not real Christianity. If your Christianity does not engage you in risk with God, you are not ready. You must be in a risk mode. You must be in a risk mode. Father, where do I get it from? Jesus is Lord. So number one is that regular giving. Number two is partnerships. Plan it. Plan it. What is your size? Don't feel bad that it is 500 naira. That's your size now. If your size is 50,000 naira, if you don't give it, that's the problem. But if your size is five, do 500 faithfully. Faithfully. Don't, that, eh. this is, mm, 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 mm. Don't miss the chance to be a giver. My offering is regular. How much is your off regular offering? 500 naira, 200 naira, whatever I did, I don't know. I'm just saying. 1,000 naira, 10,000 naira, 15,000 naira, 20,000 naira. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah? Yes, that's okay. Now, there's something about offering that can be spontaneous, where God instructs you to give a certain seed from your heart. You have some money that you've got, and the Lord places, increase that offering. It's okay. It's a generous offering. Are we together here? Yes, sir. Don't forget it's about generosity. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's about generosity. I would like to you. It's not about giving it. No. It's about the generosity. Your heart should be yearning that if I have more, I will do more. If I have more, I will do more. When I give people money most times, God is my witness. I used to wish I had more. If I have more, I will give more. I, I, and I'm not just careless in giving. No. I'm intentional that I'm walking righteousness in you. I don't give every beggar money. You encourage more begging. All right, so there's so general seeds, there's partnership. Then there's what we call tithing. That is already known. So let me give an illustration. Let's assume your offering is 10,000, 100,000. Is that okay, please? All right? Your offering is, I mean, your salary is 100,000. You have a tithe that is predetermined as 90,000. Let me tell you what works. Tithe. Eh? Tithe is 10,000. Did I say 90,000? Yes, Sorry, please. Tight is 10,000. Sorry. Sorry about that. Tight is 10,000. You is predetermined. All right? Don't see like I earned 100,000. Now I now have 90,000. No. From the day you got that job, knowing that it was God that gave you, know that that 100,000 is not 100,000. It's 90,000. If you and I are in a business yes, and the day of sharing profits comes, they gave us 500,000 naira and we are supposed to share 50-50 and I come, am I supposed to be feeling like I have 500,000 naira. Bearing in mind that I have a partner in it. I know that my money in that money is 250. Do you agree with what I just said? Yes, That's how it feels like with tight. You are mischievous to be planning that you have more than that 250. When you know that predetermined where God has already told you I want to 10% of your work. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yes, for me, example, for my year. <laughs> so it's very important. That you don't just feel that, ah, no, that ah, I earned 100,000. Oh, now I'm giving God 10,000. You are not a serious human being. 
What you earn, if you are earning 100,000, is 90,000. Please, do you understand what I'm saying? So that's what it is. Then you now take, because these things, people don't teach it boldly. Because most Christians that have integrity don't want anything to spoil their financial. I, like me now, as I'm teaching, they had me. I don't like talking about money. Because it looks like I'm begging you. I'm not begging you. And I don't mean that to be rude, though. I mean that politely. But it's true that I'm not begging you. <laughs> so, so this is the this is what it is. I, are you listening? Please listen. So 90,000 is what is left. All right? Now imagine that you have transport. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's why you need to have a God in your partnership for your finance. Because it's not enough already. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what's the partnership? That tithes number one is... Number two, your generosity. Let me tell you again. I said last week. One of the things that happens to you when you give is that God enlarges your mind. Enlarges. He increases the size of your mind. Some of us, you know, that in your chest of chest, it looks like wasting your money to take Uber. <laughs> Only you inside car, just like that. Only they'll just be carrying you up and down. <laughs> but once you start to give, a sense of awareness comes upon what you deserve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's, ah, yes, sir. Let me try this Uber one day. You just noticed that you took Uber. Somebody will say, let me pay for you. But if you don't take the Uber, nobody will say, let me pay for yes. you. The expansion of mind that your money is still saved. But Sakpa is chasing some people. <laughs> so it starts with expansion of your mind to sit down and buy shawarma for yourself alone. Looks like there's a problem. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? You have to learn that there is an enlargement of mind. Ever say enlargement of mind. Enlargement of mind. That is the first thing that God will give to you. Then you will notice that people can trust you. You notice that people can trust you. Then you notice that people want to favor you. People want to say, oh, don't worry. What if you did not price, they will not pay for. But now you can price it because your mind is enlarged. They are willing to pay for it. But when you are thinking all on your own, you were not going to dare anything outside your salary boundaries. Ooh. But now that you are giving, you are daring things beyond your salary and God is matching your needs. Mm. That's why I said, if you are spending only your salary, God has not entered your finances. Because at some point, someone should say, let me pay for you. Come and do this for me. Take this. Well, take this. There was a man that I, I can't even say enough. The man knew and gave me excess of $800. $800. Some people are doing calculation. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He knew. But he said, don't worry, just have it. Why? Why? There is something that follows the giver. It's, a, it's an oil of favor. I can't explain it. That's why it's mystical. If I can explain it, then it's science. Mm. So we go on there. And so you pay your tithe. 90000 is left. You remove your... Um, my honest opinion, your transport fare, first of all. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Remove your transport fare. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Remove your transport fare. You need to go to the work. Do you understand what I'm saying? Except the Lord advises you otherwise. Are you listening to what I'm saying here? Remove your transport fare. Remove your offering. You know the title is the first thing you've removed. Because your offering should come from what you can give or what you can eat. The tithe is, so to speak, in a sense, mandatory. Out of the rest, remove your transport fare first. That's why when negotiating, you should talk about your transport. Most times, they put it in. Remove your transport fare. What is left? Let's assume your transport fare is 25000 or 30000 out of the 90. Or let's say 40000 Maybe somebody is... It may not reach, Abby. Is it? It reach now. Today's transport, it will reach now. So let's say 40000 Let's. That I'm being... 40,000, eh? It might be more sometimes. I agree. Let's just use for the purpose of this discussion, 40,000. Is that okay? Yes, we have some 50,000 naira left. Remove your offering that in a month, what is my offering? If in a week, there are four weeks, I want to give God 4,000 in a week. 5,500 naira. You have done well. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, I'm trying to show you a practical method. At a level, you should know that 500 naira is not enough. Yeah. It's you that will know that level, not me. That's why it's a faith journey. 
Some people know that to give God 500 naira now is an insult. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't need to check mama's offering. It can't be less than thousands. If she does less, I know how much her shoe is. <laughs> I know how much her chain is. She doesn't even wear much of those things. She deals with shoes. What am I trying to say, sir? Don't deceive yourself. You see how practical I am with the matter? Yes, remove your transport fare. Remove your faithful offering. It's four weeks in a, in a month. Yes, Abby, yes, 1,000 per week. 500 per service. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say here. Yes. yes. Remove it out. And then use the rest as you want to use it. That's very generous of you. Nobody's on you on that. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Now, if I will advise you further on how to use it, save 25%. Invest 25% or 20% minimum. There are things you can still buy. Some stock mutual funds is 5,000 minimum. 5,000 every month. At the end of the day, 60,000 for a month. Just imagine putting it there without touching it for so long. There are some other investments you may have. I cannot go into all that today. Is that okay, please? But there are simple things you can get into that can help your small 5,000 make some sense. Yes, sir. There are people you can partner with. Start a fishery business. Start something. I don't want to go into ideas now. Maybe another day. So that's that on finances. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Now, what do we do with fresh fruits? Fresh fruits is also similar. It's not a fruit if you cannot eat it. The money they gave you is not first fruits to do something. It's not a fruit if you cannot eat it. So don't go and carry somebody's money and give as first fruits. You can't eat it. Don't collect somebody's job because I don't want collecting people's money. I'm going to give it. It's not first fruits. Nobody's, that's it's because when people go outside, they will tell their own story. That's what I'm putting on record. I hope it's re recording. It's not first fruit if you cannot eat it. It's what you can eat that is a fruit. Can I hear your amen? amen? What does this mean? That means remove your obligations, your tithe, your offering, um, your, of, um, your um, transport, and then you remove something for your personal welfare and upkeep, and then you give the rest. That's first fruits. That's first fruits. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, sir. Somebody feels relieved. <laughs> Let me listen to me. Listen, ma. Listen. Eh? Eh? Okay. So let me tell you now. This is what it is. Listen. Listen, please. Before our church, you and I know that we started this announcement since June. Are you hearing me? No, listen. Please let me talk. We started this conversation since June. Our reason for starting that is so that you can save that money that you will need in January. So, what do I expect from you is that you will give everything. Please, did you hear what I just said? Do you understand how I arrived at this yes, deduction? Because I want you to be wholesome. Please, are you listening, please? Yes, I want you to be wholesome about it. We started the conversation since June. June sir. We advised you what to do with June. Yes, sir. You should have saved if you are serious-minded. Yes, sir. First fruit is like somebody has pregnancy. It does not cringe on you. You planned it already. Yes. Now, what do we say about it? Quickly, let me wrap it up. It's called first and your best. Because your first might not be your best. Did you see the wisdom? You're selling bags, you're selling shoes. The first money that you made ah, was not your best. That first money was 300,000 naira. But your best came later when you made some 1.7 million. Give it to God. Glory! Give it to God. Take a step of faith. Yes, sir. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yes, sir. Thank God I don't. That's why I used to. I, this is one of the reasons why I don't like taking counseling. Because if I, you told me about your situation and I'm talking, I think I'm using you to counsel. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me anything. Go and meet admin and others. I'm telling you the truth. Do it in faith. Yes, sir. 
There is a breath of, aside from the fact that you would have risen your mind, something will happen. So don't just do it like I see, ah, I have, I have removed my this thing, I have removed my this one. You know, no, no, that's not the spirit. That's what we are announcing since June, so that you can give everything. But I need to explain everything to you step by step without missing procedures. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will stop here. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. Any questions? Did I teach on the first fruits? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Or they didn't hear about it all this while, and they want to do it by faith. Do they still have to give everything or no. do what you suggested by the movie? Scriptures tells us that the word of God produced different sizes of fruits. Some people was 30 fold, some people 60. The same word, some people 100. You don't force everybody to produce 100 at once. But you cannot be getting the capacity or the benefits of a hundredfold seed sower when you are a thirtyfold sower. Please, do you understand? That's why it says, don't be deceived. It's what you sow, you will reap. Sparingly or bountifully. So if you cut it out, cut it out, that is not bountiful. That is sparingly, as it were, in that sense. Please, do you guys get what I'm talking about here? You get accordingly. So, for example, even me as a pastor, if I'm trying to trust God for some certain things, there are some things I know that your mind can't handle. One day I call my leader and say, I was asking them, how much have you ever held before? If you've never seen some money before, you will disappear when you see it. You will just, no, 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 no. I'm telling you. There was a man that they told him his pension figure when they just increased salary for the army then. He collapsed in the bank. Collapsed. Say, what did you say? Shifted back. People thought he was excited. When he woke up, he said he has never seen such money in his life. I remember that period. It was about five million that I got then. That time, you know, that time, UBA Bank. I can't forget. They increased money, paid arrears. Ah! I said, Jesus. Jesus, yeah. You have done it again. Jesus, yeah. In a special way. What does it cost you? You may pass. <laughs> so there is a way money affects your mind. Some of you they tell you the rent of the house you are asking for. You say no, no. Where do you want to see that kind of money from? <laughs> there was a lady that mama told the price of school fees for school. Say yeah. Where do you want to get that from? In twelve years, I can never see that kind of money. <laughs> So it's not about the absence of money. It's your heart. Yes, sir. Your heart. Did I answer your question? Who has the question? Mama. Mama, did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Is there another question? Yes. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. My question is, uh, uh, 